Number one, when Lynn drives a golf ball, it travels a mean distance of 200 yards with a standard deviation of 20 yards. And the distribution of lengths is approximately normal. Approximately what percentage of her shots will travel less than 180 yards? So I like to draw a normal distribution curve so that I can label it and think about what's happening. So for this, um, it says that the mean distance is 200. So that's right smack dab in the middle. You have 50% of your data on either side here. So 50% is gonna be above 200 and 50% is gonna be below 200. Then it's giving you a standard deviation of 20 yards. And so, oops, let me label this as 200. So a standard deviation of 20, so 20 um, above 200 is gonna be at 220. 20 below 200 would be at 180. So depending on which way you wanna write these. Um, so I'm gonna do um, below over here. So 180 and then this will be 220. And then this wants to know what percentage of her shots will be less than 180. So we're trying to figure out how much is gonna be over here. And when you're looking at within one standard deviation of the mean, so this the amount of data within this interval from 180 to 220 is 68%. And if you split that in half, that means there's 34% on this half and 34% here. The reason that that's important is if you remember, we've got 50% um, of our data over here. So 50% is on this side and 34% is here. So if we do 50% minus that 34%, that'll give us what's left over for this purple chunk. And so then we get about 16% of our data is going to be below the 180 or travel less than 180 yards. All right, in number two, we have a distribution that's approximately normal with a mean of 18 and a standard deviation of four. Match the interval with the approximate percent of data that falls in each interval. So the mean we know is in the middle here. And then we can add and subtract the standard deviation to get these other numbers. So subtract four and you get 14, add four and you get 22. So there's one standard deviation. So add four again, subtract four again, there's your second standard deviation. Add four, subtract four and you get your third standard deviation. So now when you go to figure out the data, remember when you're within one standard deviation of the mean, there's about 68% of the data in that interval. And then it's cut in half over the um, mean. So 68 divided by two is 34% in each of these kind of sections. Then within one, two standard deviations of the mean, you have about 95% of the data. And so that means that in these kind of two little chunks, we've got the 95 minus um, 68, right? So if we just subtract the 68% off, that gives us our extra for these two portions. So 95 minus 68 gives us 27%. And then split into two gives us 13.5% in each of these branches. because then the 13.5 plus the 34 gives us 47 for this half or 95 for the whole thing. Then within three standard deviations of the mean is 99% of your data. So if we subtract off the 95% that's already within two, okay, so if we do the 99 minus the 95, that gives us 4% for these two little pieces here. So then we'll divide that by two and we get 2% in each of these. And then we have 1% left for um, the, the other parts. So this would be 0.5% 
and this would be 0.5%. So this is how basically every standard deviation or normal distribution is split up. So then if you figure out your mean and label your standard deviations, you can just kind of look at this to figure out the percents. So if we're looking at how much is less than 10, so here's my less than 10 amount. So that's going to be 2 plus 0.5. So that's going to be about 2.5% is less than 10. How much is between 6 and 30? So 6 and 30 is from here to here. So that's the 99% interval. So that's our three standard deviations. So that's our... Um, 99% or this 99.7%. Um, for part C, how much is between 10 and 14? So 10 and 14, whoops, we can see that we have that part labeled on here. 10 to 14 is that 13.5%. So that's number two. Between 10 and 18, so 10 to 18, you can just add these two together. 13.5 and 34 is 47.5. Between 10 and 26, so 10 to 26 is this interval, um, which is just within your two standard deviations. So that's 95% of the data. Um, then between 14 and 22. So 14 and 22 is right here. That's one standard deviation on either side. Um, so that's 68%, which is number six. Between 18 and 22 is just this 34%. And then more than 22. Um, so more than 22 would be this end. So adding 13.5 plus 2 plus 0.5, um, so that's going to be about 16%. So that's number 3. Number 3, Tyler looks at this histogram and uh, this histogram of distribution, and it has a mean of 6.7 grams, and it has a standard deviation of 1 gram. So he claims that 68% of the data is going to be between 1.5 and 7.7, .7, which is taking the mean plus 1 and minus 1, so one standard deviation. So what's the error in his thinking? So these other curves have told us that there's a normal distribution. So he's assuming there is a normal distribution of the data. And when we look at this histogram, we can see it isn't normally distributed. So a normal distribution has kind of that bell curve that I was drawing in the other ones, and this data does not. This is like way off to the side. Number four, select all designs which describe an experimental study. So A, 100 randomly selected students are asked if they have a driver's license. So all they're doing is asked something. So this is a survey. 50 baseball players are selected to wear compression sleeves during games and another 50 are selected to not wear compression sleeves. Then the number of visits to the athletic trainer is recorded for both. So they're looking at the impact of compression sleeves and non-compression sleeves on visits to the athletic trainer. So this is experimental. So they're experimenting to see if it changes something. C, 50 athletes are asked to stretch before they practice. A different group of 50 is asked if they drink more than two quarts of water a day and then the results are recorded. So all they did was recorded the results. So this is just observational. They're not doing anything with the results. They're not seeing if it impacted something. They're just asking people to do it and recording the results. 
100 students taking chemistry are randomly selected. 50 students have their arm length and wrist circumference measured. The other 50 have their foot length and head circumference. The ratios are recorded. So all they're doing is recording the ratios, no impact on anything else. So again, this is just observational. Just looking and recording. Um, e, 50 students volunteer to drink two quarts of water each day and 50 students volunteer to drink two quarts of a sports drink. Each day the students record their number of hours of sleep. So now they're doing something Okay, drinking water or a sports drink, and then they're looking at the impact on sleep. So this is experimental. Number five, a normal curve with a mean of 400 and a standard deviation is shown. Record, or sorry, shade the region under the curve two standard deviations away from the mean. So here's the mean. Um, 50 on either side would be one standard deviation. And then another 50 would be your second standard deviation. So you want to shade in that entire area from 300 to 500. Number six, how many data points are present in this histogram? So we'd want to add up all these numbers. So between this interval, there's one. This interval, there's three. Here, there's one, one, two in this one four in this one, two, one, and one. So if we add all those together, we end up with um, 16 data points.